So hello everybody, I'm uh, Trevor Hart at Ryerson University. Um, I'm just going to be the moderator. And uh, our topic is going to be about the impact of information about HIV risk on gay men. Um, I'm going to introduce somebody that you haven't seen um, except for every panel, um, who's uh, Nate Luchowski, who's awesome, and he's going to be presenting on advancing gay men's health literacy. Good afternoon, everyone. Lovely to see you again. Um, hopefully, I will be so coherent by the end of this presentation. It is my third today. Um, and I, unfortunately, am presenting this paper on behalf of a colleague, um, Ali Carter, um, and as long, uh, along with all of our other co-authors um, and their affiliations that are listed here. And really, while many of us love very, very long titles, functionally what I'm going to be talking about today is gay men's awareness of treatment as prevention and how they articulate their knowledge of treatment as prevention. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we're gathered today and often on many days um, on the unceded uh, territories of the Coast Salish people um, and to think a little bit about our own histories and trajectories from where we've come from, where we travel to, um, and where we work, live, and play that are the lands of Indigenous folk. So in terms of a background, uh, we've talked lots about health literacy, um, but uh, one's own health literacy plays an important role in their own health uh, and their own health access. And treatment as prevention, as many will know uh, here from the room, has been actively promoted in British Columbia um, as a strategy to reduce HIV morbidity, mortality, um, and transmission. But we really don't have a lot of research in terms of looking at um, what has been the impact in terms of increasing awareness or knowledge amongst gay and bisexual men here in the province. And so that's really what we're going to be looking at. So the first sort of objective, they're both labeled first, um, is to assess the association between being aware of treatment as prevention and not. So that's sort of that first level um, we might talk about in terms of health literacy. And we're going to look at different demographic, behavioral, and clinical factors separately for HIV positive gay guys, um, HIV negative gay guys, um, and then to qualitatively explore next how guys articulated um, their knowledge of treatment as prevention. So our data comes from the Momentum Health Study, uh, which is a perspective, meaning it is collecting data ongoing. We've got an office and guys come to visit us daily. Um, we've gained bisexual guys here in the greater Vancouver area. We used a recruitment strategy called Respondent Driven Sampling. Um, and the survey, the, the questionnaire that guys are completing is self-administered um, via a computer. So they sit down in front of a computer and collect it. And the clinical data that we use in terms of viral load um, and CD4 cell count comes from uh, the drug treatment program uh, for our HIV positive participants. And what we're analyzing here um, are, is data in between participants that were enrolled between February 2012 and 2014. So that's sort of the window of time. Um, and that's sort of our baseline cross-sectional data that we're using, or the first response that people would have given. So this, as they fill out the surveys time and time again, they'll be asked again about their awareness of treatment as prevention. But this is the first time they would have filled out any survey. In terms of our outcomes, awareness of treatment as prevention was whether they had heard of the term treatment as prevention or not. And if they had, they were asked where they learned uh, about this term from. And then their knowledge of treatment as prevention um, was qualitatively asked in terms of um, defining the treatment as prevention in their own terms. So in terms of analyses, our analyses are RDS adjusted. Um, so the percentages I show you are sort of um, meant to sort of be population weighted estimates uh, from the sort of data. And we are stratified by HIV status, as I said earlier, and we use multivariate logistic regression. Um, and I can talk more about that if people are interested. Uh, in terms of the knowledge sort of piece, so where guys were talking about treatment as prevention in their own words, that was coded by two independent reviewers um, and then compared. And the complete definition of true as prevention sort of included three factors. Okay, that factor being antiretroviral use, viral suppression um, or undetectability, and then sort of the act of preventing HIV transmission. So in terms of results, our, section, our, our study had 719 people complete between February 2012 to 2014. Two didn't respond to the treatment as prevention questions, so we're just going to be talking about 717 guys for the rest of this. In terms of demographics, this is the breakdown of the sample. Um, so median age, 33, 23% um, were HIV positive, 80% uh, gay, 15% bi, um, half lived in the West End, 30% um, in other parts of Vancouver, and the rest uh, further out. Um, in terms of race and ethnicity, 68% uh, Caucasian, 10% uh, Asian, and 10% Aboriginal. 48% uh, were currently unemployed, 25% um, were born outside of Canada, and 20% were currently students. So um, what was the awareness of, of, of treatment as prevention? Overall, 46% of guys had heard of treatment as prevention. Okay, when we looked at the difference between HIV positive and negative guys, positive guys were far more likely to have heard about treatment as prevention, 75 or 70% of, of positive men. 
Um, and when we look among those who had heard of treatment as prevention, so this graph on the right-hand side, um, the first two bars on the left are showing the percentage of, H, uh, of guys who knew a bit or a lot. So this is their self-declared. They're like, yeah, I know a little bit about it or I know a lot of it. Okay, and you can see again that positive guys, uh, the lighter gray bar on the right-hand side, 91% um, of them said they knew a, lot, a bit or a lot. And then in terms of talking about treatment as prevention with other people, amongst those who are aware of it, um, HIV positive guys were uh, twice as likely as HIV negative guys to report that they had talked about it with other people. But only half had, if that makes sense. So where did people hear about treatment as prevention from? So where are people learning about it? And I think what's interesting here is that it's a really different distribution um, in between guys who are positive and guys who are negative. Um, so for positive guys, half were hearing from, at, uh, about it from their doctors, um, the next being community agencies and then gay media. Um, and when we look at negative guys, the, the top was actually gay media. So a third of guys had heard it from it via gay media. And then the next was friends um, and then community agencies. So I'm um, not hearing from it from their doctors or from their sex partners as much. So now what I'm going to show you are the two tables. And they're going to have a lot of numbers on them. So this is the pause. I know it's three in the afternoon, but I'm going to talk you through it and walk you through it, um, and hopefully we'll get the gist of what matters. Um, so when we look at HIV negative guys, what we're looking at here now are some of the different factors that were associated with having a higher awareness of treatment as prevention. And what I'm going to mainly focus on, you can see the percentages here. Do I have one of these? So these are the percentages of guys that report being uh, ever having heard of TASP, so being aware of TASP. Okay, and then these are in bold are what I'm really going to talk about. Okay, and that is that um, for Aboriginal guys who are HIV negative, um, they had a lower odds. So one would be equal odds. So anything lower is less likely. Anything above one is more likely. So they were less likely to be aware of treatment as prevention compared with Caucasian HIV negative men. Um, bisexual HIV negative guys were less likely to be aware of treatment as prevention compared with HIV negative gay guys. In terms of education, um, a higher formal education or qualification was associated with more awareness of treatment as prevention. Having a current regular partner versus not uh, for HIV negative guys was associated with having greater awareness of treatment as prevention. And reporting six or more sexual partners, um, anal sexual partners, uh, was associated with having more awareness than those who had no anal sex partners or one. Um, and students were more likely to be aware um, of treatment as prevention. So that's our HIV negative men. When we look in terms of HIV positive guys, um, the factors that we see associated with awareness of treatment as prevention, again, sexual identity is coming out here, bisexual men being less likely. Um, if they were born in Canada, they were more likely to be aware of treatment as prevention. Okay. If they were currently employed, they were less likely. Um, and if they were using any party drug uh, in the past six months, um, then they were less likely to be aware as well compared to those that did not use any party drugs. And then in terms of CD4 cell count, um, those guys that had higher CD4 cell counts were more likely to be aware of treatment as prevention, uh, which makes sense in terms of thinking about the effect of, of being on treatment. So that's sort of the awareness piece and some of the differences for HIV positive and negative guys. Um, and the next slide is going to show you um, some example quotes here of sort of what complete TAS um, knowledge looked like for some guys in terms of the words that they used to describe it, and then some examples of other sort of responses that guys had provided. So an example of com a complete task definition, so this again would have all three factors, would, was a guy who said, by getting HIV treatment, viral load goes down to non-detectable, ideally, therefore lessening chances of transmission. Okay? So that's sort of one guy's articulation of treatment as prevention. Some other guys responded to the question of what is treatment as prevention and said, the more regular testing you get, the more you're exposed to STI HIV information or education, and the more likely you are to practice safer sex and prevent infections. Another guy said, taking the new drug for neg people to use if they have a pause partner, or seeing many pause guys, or high risk behaviors. So you can see that some guys are talking about other aspects of prevention that we wouldn't necessarily think about as being our definition of treatment as prevention. So this is for the overall sample, um, sort of the coding um, that happened in terms of the guys' qualitative responses. So what you can see here is these first bars are the not being aware of. Okay, so for negative guys, again, do you know what I mean? 60% were not aware, uh, and over in the positive guys, uh, about 30%. Um, and the next bar is guys who didn't provide a definition, so they didn't write anything in. Um, and then there were some guys that only described PEP or PrEP. Okay, so what I'm going to show you next is out of the guys who were aware and gave a definition, okay, this is what their knowledge should have looked like. Okay, and we, what we show here is that some guys just talked about, more negative guys were more likely to talk about PEP and PrEP as being a treatment as prevention, whereas most positive guys weren't talking about that. 
And in terms of the number of factors guys identified, you can sort of see that if this is the 50% line, about half of guys, regardless of HIV status, weren't providing any of the correct factors for their definition. Um, and then this would be the proportion of people that had fully correct definitions. So 19% of HIV negative guys, um, and I think 22 or 3% for HIV positive. In terms of the factor that people most identified, that was antiretroviral use. Okay, so 32% of HIV positive guys identified that, um, and 12% of HIV negative guys. And the one that was omitted most or was not mentioned most was viral load suppression. Okay, um, and when I think about this, sort of, I mean, it's treatment as prevention. So. It's good that they got treatment. It's sort of in the title of treatment of prevention, um, and prevention is also in that. But undetectability is not in the sort of words that we use to define treatment as prevention, and that was the factor that was most uh, omitted. So in terms of the study, uh, some of the limitations uh, is that participants were provided definitions of tasks. They might not be a complete proxy for their actual understanding of the concept. So I mean, guys are filling out the survey, and you can see that some of them chose not to provide any response, even though they said they were aware. Um, and we did collect the data over two years, um, and that's from February to 2012 to 2014. Um, and so there's been a, a bunch of time since then, and there likely is some temporal shift, and that's one of the things we'll be looking at next. In terms of strengths, um, I mean, this is the baseline estimate of treatment and prevention awareness and knowledge amongst gay and bisexual men. This is the first sort of time we've, we've shown these data. Um, and that there are really important differences we see there between HIV negative and HIV positive guys. Um, it's a mixed method approach, and I think we've seen some of that throughout this conference too, where we can use some quantitative data to sort of enumerate things, but it's important to sort of have the words of men uh, in terms of how they're talking about these definitions. Um, and in terms of RDS, they help us give a little bit of a better estimate in terms of trying to understand the sort of population level effect um, of what's going on. So in terms of conclusions or recommendations that we have out of this, half of men have heard of TASP, okay, um, but one in 10 provided a complete or partial definition um, of treatment as prevention. So I mean, that speaks to, I think, a lot of work that we have left to do in terms of um, the rollout of this idea um, and uptake within the community, um, and full uptake in terms of understanding completely what's, uh, what this means. Men living with HIV were more likely to be aware um, and to have better knowledge of treatment as prevention. Um, for HIV negative guys, the disparity we saw um, was for Aboriginal men um, were far less likely to have heard of treatment as prevention, um, but that generally social and behavioral determinants were differentially associated by HIV status. Um, and I think we need to think about how are we achieving equity in terms of health promotion. And I mean, ultimately, I think what comes out of this is that um, I think whatever we're doing in terms of rolling out treatment as prevention, we need to think about strategies that are grounded in and culturally relevant to the many, many diverse communities we have of gay and bisexual men and men otherwise identified um, that fall within this population uh, here in Vancouver and elsewhere in the province. So that's the end. If people have questions, I'm happy to take them now or at the end of the panel, um, or you can email me uh, here. Uh, but I'd like to thank all our participants in the study, um, our community advisory board and partner organizations, of which some of the logos are up here, and of course our funders, the Canadian Institutes of Health and the National Institutes of Health in the United States. Thank you. <laughs>